Now, hello and welcome to the next part of our life. The last time we started the third step of our life. So, let's see what the moments can bring us. Hmm, hmm. Which one first? Which one first? Hmm. Hmm. How about we just go... Reverse order. From right to left. Okay, then let's start with drive. <clears throat> like a lazy cat, you stretched your arms above your head and yawned, blinking your eyes sleepily. The day was warm and pleasant, and we were launching on the couch in the living room, finding it difficult to do much in that moment. Your moms and Liz had gone out shopping, looking for some new items for your sister to take back and decorate her college dorm with. They had asked if you wanted to go with them, but you declined, for you today was all about relaxation. Same. Corva had dropped by to spend some time with you, content to join in with doing nothing. The two of you had been chatting idly as you laced around, talking about the other things you had planned for the summer. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> ah, these choices. Hmm, let's just say next to him. One of his legs was stiffly crossed over the other, and he had barely looked at you the entire time he'd been there. <laughs> the day dragged on, and you found yourself yawning more and more often between conversations. You had almost dozed off completely when suddenly a bus rang out, disturbing the silence. Your phone was on its charger in the kitchen, so it couldn't have been that. Cover pulled, uh, pulled his own phone from his back pocket and checked the screen. His movement had jostled you, so you tried to re readjust your position to get it right again. Oh. <clears throat> it's my mom. After leaning forward and setting the phone on the coffee table in front of him, Cover uh, hit the speaker button. Hey, what's up? Reyna's here too. Hi, Cover. Hi, Hi Reyna. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom Free. <laughs> Hmm. I would say hi, but I do have to admit, making a small noise in response is way too in character for me to ignore. Carver, baby, I wanted to ask you if you had, if you have a plan for all of your junk. Carver made a small, outraged grumble, giving you a sidelong glance. That's not junk. It's important. Hmm? Though you couldn't see it, you could tell by the sound of her voice that Ka Kara was smiling. Uh -huh. But is that a yes or no about the plan? He looked over at you, his mouth pulled into a tight smile. I'm still thinking about it. Um, Reina? I'm gonna take the phone off speaker so me and mom can get over this. It'll be quick. Without wa waiting for an answer, Cover took the phone from the table and pushed himself to his feet. He hit the speaker button again to turn it off and continued the conversation with his mom as he headed towards the door. The lock clicked behind him as he exited the house and you sank back into the cushions, idly trying to decide what to do next. After electing to grab your own phone from its charger, you resumed your position on the couch, tapping away at the screen. Your mind drifted away from thoughts of Carver and his phone call with all the many ways your device could distract you, of course. It was an effective enough way to kill the time, and you had managed to do various little things when a door opened again and Carver returned. Hey. I hope you managed without me. You watched as Carver strolled over to where you were still sitting. How did the call go? Oh, well. He sighed dramatically and let his forehead fall against the couch back, 
his ponytail flopping forward all over the front cushion. I know I just came back from visiting my mom, but... Well, last time I flew there, every time I just flew there and back, and so there's a lot of stuff I've left over there because I couldn't take it all with me on the plane. No, then I'm not gonna be visiting her like I used to. I'll have to go get it at some point. He gave you a look that you thought seemed almost guilty. Uh, some of it is pretty big, so it's not really practical to have it shipped. I can drive over and pick it up. When will you go? That's what my mom wanted to know. She thought it would be best to do it soon before things get even busier. He paused and let out a soft sigh, his shoulders dropping as if he really didn't want to be the one to have you tell your dad. I think it's probably the idea that makes the most sense too. It'd be good to get it over and done with, I'll be setting out as soon as I can. Um, another trip already then. He signed and dropped his hat again. You could tell he wasn't any happier about having to go than you were about seeing him leave. Hmm, that's mean. That is mean. Fine sounds a bit, uh, I don't know. Just to say fine, it's no, 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 no. It's not a big deal. The quicker you leave, the quicker you'll, be c you'll come back, right? Yeah. Looking up again, you met his bright aquamarine eyes, finding a smad, a smad, <laughs> smad, <laughs> a sad smile tugging on his lips. Oh. oh, suddenly his eyebrows jumped and his eyes lit up like a lamp. You could come with me. What? <laughs> you should come. My visits to my mom are usually special, so she and I so she and I can spend time together, but this time it's not like that, it's an errand. My plan is to drive out one morning, spend a night, and then we can pack up the car the next morning and turn right back around. It would only take two days for the whole thing. You thought to yourself for a moment, amused by Cover's excitement. Are you sure it'd be okay if I go? I would be better than to be alone in the car for god knows how many hours. <laughs> At least that way you can entertain each other. And you have the chance to um, bother cover with your particular <clears throat> taste for music, so it's a win-win. Yeah, why not? I probably could use the company, it's a pretty long drive for one person. A sprinkling color spread over his cheeks as he emitted quietly. And i just really like to have you around. Plus you would have a chance to see my mom in person. I know she would be happy to see you again. You wrinkled your nose, supposing that would be alright after all, if you were so sure about it. Alright, I can come. I'll have to let my moms know, but as long as we got nothing else important on the days we pick, there's no reason I wouldn't be able to go. Cover's face brightened, and you were sure the prospect of having a travel buddy made the task seem less tiresome. I'll call my mom back and tell her. We can pick a time right now. You spent some time together going over your schedules and making plans for when you could take the trip. You needed, it, uh, you needed to find it in around both of your work schedules, which took a bit of doing, but came together in the end. Luckily it was only a two day trip, so finding a couple of free days in the world wasn't impossible. It wasn't long before the dates were finally set, and all the plans were made. Hmm... <laughs> I must say, the feeling of excitement and the feeling of nervousness can be very similar sometimes. But if we were to interpret excitement as something positive and nervousness as something negative, then excited. 
a short trip sounded like the perfect way to spend some time. You could listen to music, eat snacks and enjoy the open road. No matter what you thought about things, the morning when you were due to leave arrived. It was cooler than usual. The sun barely peeking over the tops of the houses. You stood outside your house on a footpath near the, near the road, waiting for cover. You yawned loudly, covering um, your mouth with the back of your hand. Mornings were always a struggle, indeed. The biggest betrayal of all when you can't sleep long on a weekend because your internal clock said nope you're always getting up at 7 or 8 a.m so you're gonna do the same on the weekend no matter how how long you've slept Oof. why why with your travel bag cluttered in one hand you watched this cover finished packing up his car he had organized all sorts of things water bottles snacks and who knows what else Carver insisted he had everything under control and didn't need help. At least you could rest easy, knowing that it, were, that it was all taken care of. As you waited, you glanced over Carver's car. You knew it well, it used to belong to Mr. Holden and when Carver had learned to drive, it passed to him. His dad had taken the opportunity to get a newer one. It was pretty old at this point, but had served both of them well so far. You just hoped it had enough life left in it to survive a trip as long as you were embarking on. I've had some pretty old cars, at least in my family, and they usually are good. They are. I will I was only betrayed once by a by a one. The slam of a door closing made you jump. You snapped back to focus and Sarkova was walking towards you. He dusted his hands off on, her, on that, he dusted his hands off on his pants and tilted his head towards the car. That's it, ready to go? Yep, I'm ready. He smiled and stepped aside, giving you space to situate your own bag where you wanted it. Once everything was safely inside, he glanced back at you. All right. We should get started. It's gonna be a ways to go. <laughs> I would give a thumbs up, so I guess a high five is the closest thing. He returned it happily, chuckling at your enthusiasm. The two of you climbed into the car and buckled up. Cover in the driver's seat and you sitting shotgun. I do... I am wondering what exactly sitting shotgun means, but I assume it's... It's just the partner seat of the driver. I guess that's what I'm thinking. His eyes move to you. Thank you. Uh, thanks again for coming on this trip with me. You're welcome. After driving the mirrors and starting the engine, you pulled out of the driveway and the trip again. With a small sigh, you got cozy in your seat and watched the familiar houses in your neighborhood pass by. Carl reached over to turn on the radio, a cackle of static mixed with the odd snippets of a song filled the car as he flipped through the stations. Mr. Holmes' car was in good condition, but it was well older. There was no way to plug in a phone to play music, so the radio had to do. You could also just play the music on your phone, however, battery is a thing. Eventually, he settled on a top 40s uh, station, before sitting back and resting both hands on the wheel. Is this okay? 40s. So I'm guessing it's like an old time, more older sounding songs, because that's... I usually like them. Hmm <laughs> hmm. How could I forget? He smiled, happy with the answer. Time flew by and with it the scenery outside your window became more and more unfamiliar. It was a little fluttery being alone in a car with cover for so long, there was nowhere else you could you would have rather been. Every now and then you would look over and sneak a glance at him, wondering what he was thinking about. Eventually cover broke the silence, clearing his, his throat softly before he spoke. 
It's been too long since you and I have spent time with my mom. I know she still comes to the neighborhood sometimes, but it's not even once a year. I always go in. I'm always going to hers. I'm happy the two of us are doing this. Yeah, me too. But speaking of your mom and trips, remember that time she took us on that crazy drive all over town? He shook his head at the memory, his laughter clear and bright. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> oh, I remember. I kept roaring about papers and shoes while you were having a blast. <laughs> Hmm. I mean, it would have been cool. He smiled quietly to himself, clutching the wheel a little more confidently. With the crinkling of his eyebrows, a look of nostalgia crossed over Carlos' features. <sighs> Mom always knew how to make things memorable. I can't, I can't deny that. Silence slowly crept back into the space, both of you thinking back on that night and all the memories you had of it. Your elbow resting on the windowsill, you gazed out at a world that was slowly coming to life as the morning rolled on by. The sun clim climbed higher in the sky, forcing you to adjust the visor overhead to keep it out of your eyes. Hey, do you mind reaching back for me? Harvey gave you a sidelong glance as he drove, indicating with a nod of his head and a tiny smile. I want some chips, the salt and vinegar ones. Ooh. Right? Right? Eat whatever you want to. I brought a bunch of everything. Stretching out the seatbelt to give yourself space, you twisted it in your spot and reached into the bag holding the snacks. It took a bit of effort to sort through the collection of goodies stuffed inside, but eventually the bag of chips crinkled beneath your fingers as you pulled them out and Sand back into your seat. Here. Thanks. Do you mind opening it? His eyes lit up at the prospect of the snacks, and you shook your head in amusement, popping the top of the bag. <laughs> That's what I have been thinking about since you mentioned the ships. Want me to feed them to you? His eyes widened, a hint of a blush creeping over his cheeks, but he steadfastly continued to face the road. Uh, no, that's okay. Can you just pour a few into my hand? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Cobra held out one outstretched hand. You did your best to have the chips fall into his palm, but some did end up ending up on the floor. After that, you rolled up the top of the bag and stowed the ships safely into the back again. When you turned to the front, it was to find Cobble crushing the fistful of chips into his mouth, crunching loudly. He wiped his hands on his pants absentmindedly again, before gripping the wheel and spilling crumbs all over the, pra all over the place. Oof, my parents would go insane. <laughs> Yeah, laughing. You couldn't stop the amused sound that escaped you, and when Cobb raised a questioning earbro, you simply shook your head. The hours drifted by much the same way as that, with the two of you snacking and chatting as the day stretched on. It was fairly qu calm and quiet, traveling along the open road, and you found little in the way of interruptions. At one point you passed a Welcome to Nevada sign, and Cobb gave, gave a tiny cheer. He was in disbelief that the two of you were ser seriously all the way in, in another state like that. Eventually you had to stop for gas and made it a tour at a small diner to grab a proper, proper meal that didn't consist of chips and candy. Yeah. After refueling both the car and your stomachs, the drive was back on, just as the sun began dipping beneath the horizon and bathing the sky in a wash of orange light. Cover informed you that there wasn't too much longer left to go. You were almost there. How long did you drive? Poor boy. Uh, I would... <clears throat> the, I mean... Mm, I hate driving. I hate it. I absolutely despise driving. But I can. 
Mm. I mean, how are the streets in America? I don't know. Are they really just open, empty roads with absolutely nothing on them? With barely ever seeing another car? Because then I probably c could drive without any problem. Mm. Let's stay... <sighs> I would... Hmm, alone for cover to drive is also stupid. The poor boy. Like, driving 10 hours? That's insane, man. Hmm. <sighs> this is a fantasy. Let's choose the option that makes me more comfortable. Meaning, not driving. <laughs> he appreciated it and you managed the journey together. When night eventually fell into a blanket of darkness, the drive finally came to an end. Cover pulled into a parking lot of Kira's apartment building, the glow of the car lights disappearing as he turned off the engine and let out a heavy sigh. Oh. We made it. We're here. The two of you exchanged tired smiles, having su successfully and safely completed one half of the trip. Your butts must hurt a lot now. You are relieved to have actually arrived and eager to get out of the car and stretch your legs. You took the stairs up to the building together. After a knock, you were abruptly met by a flash of green hair as Kyra opened the door and immediately took her son into her arms. There he is, my gigantic baby boy! She squeezed him for a moment before she could let go. Cover embraced her tightly back. It was a hold that reaffirmed of all the love he had for her as his mom, she stroked the top there. It was a hold that reaffirmed all of the love he had for her as his mom. She stroked the top of his head in response. When the script finally loosened, she pulled back so she could examine his face. Are you even taller than the last time I saw you? Kafa gave a fond look as she patted the top of his shoulders proudly. You say that every time I'm here. It doesn't even make sense right now. My last visit wasn't that long ago. Kyra simply laughed before letting him go fully, ushering the two of you into her apartment. Then she turned to you, a white grin pulling at her lips. <clears throat> right now, it's so nice you came along with, and as a bonus, you've both arrived in one piece. It's nice to see you. Kara beamed at you both, and while you would have loved nothing more than to settle down and rest after the drive, you could see she wasn't going to let you go that easily. Oof. So, so how was the how was the trip? I admit I was just a pinch worried. It was alright. We made it without a scratch. Kara clapped the hands together, the, br the bracelets around her wrist jiggling. I'm so proud. I can hardly believe how mature you both are. Where did all those mods come from? Cover in the hand of her hair with an awkward chuckle. I don't, know. I don't know, maybe I got some from my parents. His mom looked up at him deeply, her eyes glistening as she shook the sentimentality off with the wave of her hand. <laughs> you have to be half asleep already, huh? I don't want to keep you up much longer, early morning and any woozies. How do you want to deal with the sleeping arrangements? I've only got my own room and covers, although the living room's couch is in bed. You can keep your bed, mom. Raina can use mine and I'll sleep on the couch or the floor. Whatever's easiest, it doesn't matter for one night. Carol laughed out loud, startling you both. You rest an eyebrow at her outburst, giving her a quizzel, quizzical look. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember what she's talking about. Oh yeah, he'll just stay on the floor. You couldn't handle that much back when you were 13 with both of your parents in your room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was my fault. <laughs> I attempted him. Well, it can be called temptation. It's just... Uh, I lured him into the loft. Let's just call it that. 
Cover blushed a dark deep and gazed completely unprepared for her to pull a that embarrassing moment from the past. Hey. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I would not tease, co tease cover for it. It really was my fault. The blame is on me. <laughs> it was I. <laughs> cover is not the one at fault, but I don't believe we ever explained it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would laugh it off. Thankfully, the tension in the air dissipate dissipated that Kara and Kova chuckled along with you. Hmm. Hmm. I guess I'll just take him up on his... On his offer, no? But please, sleep on the couch, boy. Otherwise, I will come to you and lure you back into your bed again. Do not sleep on the floor. Sleep on the couch, boy. Cover offered a small smile. Uh, no problem. So, would you be okay with me sleeping on the floor in the room? I would rather be there than out in the open in the living room, even if there is a couch. Why? Couch, couch, please. She nodded sensibly, pleased with the decision, even though Kova was not. I know it's... <clears throat> I know it's not what you prefer, Kova, but it's probably for the best. I'm sorry I don't have an air mattress or anything. It's not a big deal. Kova brushed it all off with the wave of his hand, giving you an understanding smile. Please, don't sleep on the floor, it's not. Kova clas uh, la Kira clasped her hands together, her bracelets softly tinker tinkling against each other again. It's only getting later, so I better let you prefer for bed. She nodded towards the hallway and gave you a small smile. I'll play hostess for a sec and show you where the bathroom is first, Reina, and where you'll be staying for the night. Thank you. You hoisted your travel bag over your shoulder and followed behind Kayra and down the hallway. Good night, Kov. Night. night. You twisted backwards to give Kov a wave, which he turned. Then you caught up with his mom, who continued to show you around the place. The apartment was small, but nicely decorated in soft, cool colors, with plenty of artwork hanging on the walls to give it character. It was stylish and exactly what you would, e would have expected from someone like Kayra. After being shown the bathroom and wishing Kara a good night, you headed into the room alone. Looking around, you found the bedroom looked much the same as the rest of the apartment, but with small ocean elements. You were sure Kobo must have enjoyed when he stayed, stayed here. All in all, the room was pretty and clean, though it almost looked more like a hotel guest room than a bedroom. Kava only spent a few weeks out of the year here and there, so it made sense that it wasn't especially lived in. With the night getting late, you riffled through your um, travel bag to find pajamas, getting charged and ready to crawl into bed. The lights were flipped, but when you huddled beneath the covers, a soft glow from the outside peeked through the blinds, casting shadows the, over the floor. Hmm. I will probably feel very tired. <laughs> you hardly noticed your surroundings as you pulled the co covers up higher, blocking out the rest of the world. Your eyelids started dropping, becoming heavier and heavier. You were trying your hardest to fall asleep when your phone bust on the nightstand vibrating against the wood. Cracking one eye open, you could clearly see the fluorescent screen lighting up the dark room. You reached over to pick it up, squinting against the brightness. It didn't take more than a second or two for you to realize it was Cove. And you quickly scanned his message. <laughs> hey, I was just wondering what you think of my room. 
I am set, set up on the couch out here. Hmm. Hmm. He was right in the other room, and he still messaged you. He really didn't mind being a troublemaker when it suited him. I mean, why not? Hi! <laughs> hmm... Cool, thanks. With the cover pulled over your head, the two of you continued mess messaging well into the night. Even though you knew it was irresponsible to keep each other up, every now and then Cobb would send through something that made you laugh, a picture or a joke, and you both had to clamp a hand over your mouth to keep from waking Kyra. Kyra. Eventually you drifted off to sleep without noticing at all, your phone still firmly clutched into your hand. The next day dawned, bringing with it the sounds of birds chirping happily outside the window. You opened your eyes slowly, letting them adjust to the light as you tried to recall where you were and remembering the unfamiliar sight of Cover's second bed bedroom. I mean, I... This is difficult. If I'm sleeping over somewhere else, then I usually wake up on my own as soon as, I, as light creeps into the room because my eyes... I can't sleep when there's any form of light in the room. I am definitely not the type to you otherwise wake up on my own. Oh, let's go with the fun option. Rise and shine, Reyna. Cover shook your shoulder and you groaned dramatically and buried your head beneath your pillow. Mm, five more minutes. <laughs> five more minutes. No way. No way. We gotta get started. Sitting up in bed, you let out a yawn and stretched your arms above your head. Oof. <laughs> There's no way I would I would feel that alright. You were used to sleeping in longer than this, and the late night hadn't helped. Morning. The two of you were on completely different two wavelengths right now. You pulled yourself out of bed, grabbing a fresh change of clothes and your toiletries before heading off to their bedroom. After all that, bathroom. After all that, you met Cover back in his room. He was sitting on the floor when you entered, sorting through a bunch of stuff in a box, determining what to bring and what to leave behind. Hey. Hey. Hey, can you pull out the stuff in those drawers? You nodded down, he hadn't even looked up from his task, so you knew you wouldn't have seen. Heading over the drawers, you started to you started the task of taking out various items and setting them on front of the and setting them on the ground in front of Carver. Oh hey, look at this. When you turned towards the sound of Carver's voice, you found him dr digging through one of the drawers beneath the bed. Me. <laughs> Here's something I definitely need to bring. Neat. Training your head, you got a better glimpse of what he was holding. An old yellowing book when he opened it up, there were a few dried pressed flowers beneath the pages. Hmm. Those had been gifts you had given him for his mom's place, something for him to remember you by and to make his time here less lonely. He kept them the whole time. <laughs> of course you should take them. <laughs> I'd be hurt if you didn't. A small smile put at your lips as you thought on, back on when you had mailed your gift to Carl. I put a lot of thought in that, into that present, you know. Hmm. It's nice. He's so special. It was important having a piece of you with me when we were apart. Oh, <laughs> now you're getting really embarrassing. I felt the same way. That's why. I <clears throat> no, wrong voice. My voice. 
I feel the same way, that's why I gave them to you. Cover smiled, pleased that the feeling was mutual, and then the expression became more amused. And did you keep the souvenirs I brought back? I usually don't get rid of souvenirs from other people. I still even have those shiny stones I liked in ele elementary school. I'm not the time to throw things away. <laughs> His grin grew to completion. Thanks. Another hour passed by in silence, and you were happy to see you were making great progress with Cover's room, with only the closet left to sort through. You took a minute to take a mouthful of water from your bottle and perched on the edge of the bed, feeling productive. Cover glanced over you and paused. Putting down the tape gun he had been using to seal up his boxes, you raised an eyebrow. You know, it's really strange to see you sitting in this room. Why? He frowned a little, his eyes distant, distant and his voice quiet when he spoke next. During the visits to mom's, when I was sitting alone in this room, I would sometimes think about you, how you weren't here. It was a weird feeling at the time, that you just weren't around, and now that you're here, in this exact place, it's... I don't know how to explain the feeling. He shrugged it off and smiled a little, as though he said enough already and didn't want to risk sounding silly. Life is pretty confusing, is all. Hmm. 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 Let's choose this one. I kind of want more want to say, "Oh, you missed me." And this, I guess, fits at the best. He have to laugh at that, his eyes crinkling at the corners as he made a face at you. It's not like I could forget you. He looked away satisfied, heading over to the closet and the last of the items to be sorted. Before long, every box, closet and drawer had been thoroughly combed through, with the items either neatly packed up in boxes or organized in return to their proper place. With a sign of relief, you glance around the bedroom and the work you had done together. We're done. Good job to us. I'm gonna change out of my PGs for the drive. Yep. When the two of you headed out into the living room ready to get everything finalized and hit the road, you find Kara in the kitchen purring a cup of tea. Cover headed towards her, leaning casually against the counter that divided the two places. Hey, you didn't have to get up so early. Hello. Are you crazy? Of course I would have to see... See you off before you go. You can't sneak away while I'm out cold. You beamed at him, she beamed at him and in all honesty seemed more than happy to be up and ready for the day. Do you want some breakfast? I've got some... Is this muesli? I think that's supposed to be muesli. Do you want some breakfast? I got some muesli or eggs and toast. Oh, and some of that fruity cereal you used to love. For me, in my mind, muesli and cereal are pretty much almost the same thing. <laughs> muesli is a form of cereal. Uh, that's okay, we should really eat on the road. Kara smiled sadly, a little disappointed, but she seemed to understand that your time was running thin. I thought you might say that. In that case, I've packed you some snacks for the road. What do you think? Even if you don't end up eating them, take it anyway, just in case. You can always feed them to Cliff when you get home and tell him I said hi. Cole laughed and shook his head, knowing his dad would love nothing more to, to polish off whatever food Kara had prepared for you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mom. You really didn't have to. Hmm. That's nice. Not a problem. I wanted to make sure you were probably fat at least. She returned your smile with one of her own before putting her cup of tea aside. Well, I'll help you get the pa car packed. Sure. Sure, thanks. The three of you got a move on, taking the boxes from Cover's bedroom and heading down to fill the backseat of the car. 
until there was barely an inch of space left in the back trunk. With all of you helping, it only took a little couple of trips to move everything, and you were done before you knew it. Then it was truly time to say goodbye. You convened? You convened back inside the apartment where Kara looked over the two of you with a quiet smile. It was great to see you both. <clears throat> no. It was great to see you both. Thank you for coming. She gave you both, uh, each of you, a hug, and you felt a little sad that you hadn't been able to spend more time with her. It would be kind of nice if at least you stayed one more day. It was good to see you too, Mom. Cov embraced her and in return, the two of them holding on to each other for a few seconds longer. I'll miss you, but I'll visit again soon. Of course. You better. Hey, we should make plans for you to visit us too. I'll let you know when it's settled. I would love that. Kara bundled all the stuff she prepared into a bag and handed them over to you. You took a sneak peek at what she had packed. There was fruit, nuts, seed, hard-boiled eggs and some veggie sticks. Nice. Cool. Oh, good to see you've got some fresh food op- Good to see we've got some fresh food options now. The snacks I brought weren't. <laughs> Kara shook her head at him and let out a soft laugh. As though she couldn't have expected anything else. I seriously hope you're feeding yourself better than that at home. Yeah, of course, not just on trips. I can live with that then. She looked over at him fondly, her eyes at last focusing on his face and filling with emotion. I'm going to miss you, baby. Me too. Me too. <laughs> We'll be back. I hope so. Kara put an arm around you both, pulling you in tight to her sides for one final squeeze. Bye. Have a safe trip? We will. So crazy how a trip to another state takes like an entire day. When in Europe, you're like in Italy. When you drive, no. You're even, like, at the bottom of Italy or something around that. Like, driving five hours is already quite a lot. <laughs> With a last goodbye, you exited the apartment. Though Conval hesitated for a moment at the door, his expression distant. You weren't sure what he was doing, no, you tentatively took a step towards him. Everything okay? The voice seemed to bring him back to earth, and he shook his head to clear his thoughts, his greenhouse swaying from side to side. Yeah, let's go. With that, the two of you headed back down to the car, ready to make the long trip home. Soon enough, you were on the wi wide open road with a car full of covered things and only one destination, Sunset Bird, California. The drive went as smoothly as could be expected, with the morning slowly creeping into the midday as the miles flew by. The day flew by on a whirl of open road and sunshine, and before you knew it was early afternoon. By that point you had already crossed the state line. Cover announced that he planned to a little stop on the way home. He was quite pleased with himself as you arrived at the... Precipice? I don't know this word. Ah, the Redwood National Park. Shaded beneath a canopy of enormous redwood trees, you drove along. When Koffer parked the car, you pushed the door to get out, and the first thing you did was look up. Enormous red trees surrounding you on all sides. The massive trunks shooting straight up into a canopy of foliage ahead. There were too many of them to count, stretching on and on as far as you could see. He squinted against the sunlight that was peeking through the leaves and dancing on the paths around you. It's great, right? He smiled at you from over the roof of the car before glancing around the place fondly. <laughs> Remember the trip our families took here that one summer? It was cool going on a journey and seeing the forest in person, even if we didn't stay very long. 
And I guess we can stay for even less this time, but oh well. I know you didn't have a super good time then, but I thought maybe you would be able to enjoy the park now. It just seemed like a good time to stop by. Who knows when we'll get another chance. His voice got a little softer at the end, it seemed to be bittersweet for him, being in a place he was so fond of but not having the time to appreciate it fully. I mean, why not? You need breaks. You need breaks. You cannot just strive, I don't know, an entire day without some proper breaks. It was a beautiful place to stretch your legs and take in some fresh air. Hmm. I'll put up with you for the trees, oh come on. Let's go again sometime. Cover smiled, shoving his hands into his pockets and dripping his head. I'm gonna hold you to that. The two of you walked around for a while, completely dropped by the sheer scale of the Red Woods. It kind of put your view of yourself and everything in a strange perspective. Doing walks sometimes does that to you. You took a lungful of clean forest air, listening to the sounds of birdsong and the cool breeze rustling through the underbrush, taking advantage of the space to move around freely. However you felt... However you felt about being there, it was a totally different scene than sitting in on that old car for hours and hours. Hmm. 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 I mean, why not closer? I usually walk close with friends, either right behind them or like side by side, if the path is big enough. He seemed tense when you approached, but he didn't move away. Eventually he relaxed a little and the two of you walked along in a comfortable silence. Being here again, you couldn't help but reminisce on what else had happened during the trip you had taken here all, all that time ago. There were a lot of things that had reminded you of it recently. You looked over at Cove, who seemed to be lost in the peace of the of the place, and you wondered if any of it crossed his mind. Smiling at the sight, you thought back on what had been a highlight of the long gone vacation. <laughs> You're gonna remind him again of it? <laughs> Our families were so close, it kind of sounds weird. Like it's a thing of the past. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do this here. There was barely enough room for the two of us, but it was fun. Carver chuckled and shook his head at the moment. It was memorable, especially when I got caught up there by my parents in the morning. He laughed and soon enough you were joining him. It had been pretty embarrassing for him at the time, but you were glad you could look Back at it and laugh about it now. You continued chatting about the trip a little while longer, about the things you had seen and done and even eaten. A lot of the memories covered of the trip were similar to your own, but you were also surprised to hear a few other things from his point of view. So much had happened, there was no shortage of things to talk about, the place certainly had a nostalgic quality to it. Your spirits were light as you were as you ample past information boards and picnic areas. But before long you decided it was time to bring the short stop to an end and head back to the car to get on the road again. Cop aside when you finally reached the vehicle, jangling the keys in his hand before unlocking the doors. Well, I wish we didn't have to go, but we're going to be responsible and not stay longer than we should. How grown up of you! He smiled slightly and with them the two of you jumped into the car, buckled in and, the and he put it in drive. You were getting closer and closer to town as the sun started setting, though they were still far enough away that the radio stations were unfamiliar to you. 
Carver twisted the dial this way and that before stumbling onto a channel with a song he seemed to like. That was a rare gift from the fates in a sea of static, strange radio jocks and jockeys and grating tunes. His face immediately brightened at the sound of it and he drummed his finger fingers along the bottom of the steering wheel happily. Sitting back in a seat, he bobbed his head to the shimmering and shimmering his shoulders in a time on a Sitting back in his seat, he bobbed his head and shimmed his shoulders in time to the tune and all while mouthing along the words. Occasionally he even lifted one hand from the wheel to gesture with his fingers for a specific line. In times like this you gotta sing it together. Me and my sister do it all the time. Intentionally singing very obnoxiously to very epic songs, so our parents have to suffer from us. Cover raised the police eyebrow at your vocalization. Emboldened by you, Cover decided to speak the words rather than lip syncing. Your voices mixed together, slowly creeping louder and louder as you belted out words to the song. That's the fun, the best way to do it. Every now and then a uh, word would be sung wrong, and by the end you were both laughing too much to continue. The song ended and Cover reached over to start circling through the radio stations again, upon finding nothing terrible. He flipped the dial off to in defeat and leaned back in his seat with a sigh. You rested your head on your hands and stared out the window as the sky darkened, watching the landscape slowly melt into a more familiar view. The miles went on and any energy you had earlier was beginning to drain away. You imagined home and your family and you would be there together soon. You know, I spent all these years living in Sunset Bird and taking a few weeks each summer visiting my mom in that second room. That's not gonna happen anymore, not really. I, need... I can still see my parents, but the way it all works between us has changed forever. He paused, the silence stretching, a serious look settled on his face, his thoughts far away. Hmm... I mean, I can you ever not be worried about the future? <laughs> so many things will be different. I hope I'm ready for. Cover's mouth pulled into a tight line, and he gave a small nod. You got the feeling that he understood how you felt. Cover stared straight ahead down the long, long road. The path looked like it would never end from where you were, but that wasn't true. Eventually, I found a few more words to say. So glad. I think it's good we were able to do this trip without any parents or chaperones. It was just us. We did it all. I don't know, I feel a little more independent now. A little more ready for what's ahead. Right. <laughs> it's like a real first step on our own all the time. It'll be here before we know it. I mean, <laughs> even when you grow up, you're not gonna be like alone all the time. People who were there before are still gonna be there, if you make the effort, of course. The topic seemed to wear on Korf, and he made an attempt to find something else to speak on. I'm kinda sad about getting back. I'm gonna miss having you around tonight. He grimaced and leaned forward, his shoulders tense and his eyes hyper-focused on the road ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean for that to sound weird or anything, it's just nice to hang out. That isn't strange, I can understand it. Cover gave you a small smile when that you returned, and the two of you fell into a more comfortable silence. The sky outside grew even grew ever darker as the hours passed by, the stars blinking on like Tiny fireflies painted on a canvas of blue. The scenery continued transitioning between open roads and industrial areas and beach towns, becoming increasingly be increasingly recognizable as time went on. You felt somewhat disconnected from the world around you as you watched it through your window, your tired mind growing hazy. 
It was a strange, reflective feeling, but, fe but peaceful nonetheless. Soon enough, the world would return to you and you would find your feet firmly on the ground. It couldn't be helped. The adventure would end, life could continue, but your memories would linger on. And that was quite a long moment. Ooh. So then, I will end the part here. Then, until the next part, I think I will do charity next. So, until then... Bye!